sponsored FDP on antenna mostly actually we are discussing antennas here so we have already covered few lectures on antennas and one lecture on which is actually related to not the antennas which was related to psychology and classroom behavior like thing so today's speaker is dr manoj singh parihar so it's my it's a great pleasure for me to introduce our guest speaker dr manoj singh parihar dr manoj singh parihar did his phd from indian institute of technology delhi in 2012 He worked as senior project scientist at Center for Applied Research in Electronics, IIT Delhi, from July 2010 to March 2013. In April 2013, he joined Indian Institute of Information Technology, Design and Manufacturing, Jabalpur, as assistant professor. In October 2007, he received Institute of Electronics and Telecommunication Engineers, which is IETE, research fellowship. for his research work on reconfigurable antennas in 2007 he was selected for the university training program organized by the national institute of international education niied to visit south korea he has published more than 75 technical papers in the referred journals and conference proceedings his areas of research are reconfigurable rf printed and circuits passive and active microwave integrated circuits rf energy harvesting circuits microwave and millimeter wave device characterization and rf maps so we welcome you sir and first thing is uh, uh, we thank you for accepting our invitation for giving a uh, talk here at this platform yeah. thank you dr rajis it's my pleasure to accept your invitation of this talk so thanks for your my introduction yes thank you sir electric power integrated antennas for rf energy harvesting or wireless power transfer under the central faculty development program at your estimate institute iit pune and i myself myself dr ms parihar i am a faculty or assistant professor at in triple uh, iit jabalpur so the outline of my talk is uh, i'll start with the introduction of the basic introduction of rf energy harvesting circuit and what are the classification how we can classify different category of this energy harvesting then we have to ensure the sufficient ability of rf signal to harvest the or rf energy then how sir, uh, sorry sorry to interrupt you sir uh, can you make it full screen sir uh, yes yes that's yes. full screen Yes, yes, sir. It's fine, sir. So thank you, sir. Uh, then uh, discuss about the design. How to design? What are the steps? We are making some kind of you no know, RF energy harvesting circuits. Then some novel published design for uh, uh, the selective RF integrated RF antennas. Then uh, we can combine also. You no, know, you can combine RF and some other other energy harvesting circuits. So we can call it high reductive RF integrated antenna. And it, this talk will be concluded by the future. so what is the basically what is energy harvesting so is a process you know maybe you are all of you aware this energy harvesting is a process of uh, extracting energy available in the environment and converting into the usable power so, so we can power you know your electric devices like wireless sensor or smartphones or watches tablets medical implants the concept may be enable wireless so the idea is to make the device you know, power independent so by using this concept we can make the gadgets to be completely i mean autonomous in terms of power requirement you can see the first example is solar solar energy harvesting where we are harvesting sunlight by using the solar panel right in second case we can harvest you know your heat also then you can harvest wind energy then you can harvest mechanical energy and convert into dc energy to power your devices then we will mainly talk about the this portion rf uh, Microwave energy harvesting. So we have abundant source of RF energy. Maybe this may be base station or maybe Wi-Fi terminal or maybe mobile handsets. We have a variety of resources from RF, right? So we can harvest power. Then 
radio frequency IE harvesting, particularly means RF and IE harvesting or wireless power transfer. So it's a technique to convert high frequency EM or RF energy available in the atmosphere to convert into DC or low voltage or low current to power other devices. So broadly, we can classify this into two category. One is the near field, or it's called low frequency energy harvesting. And for this, we use basically coupling. We can use inductor or we can use capacitor to couple the uh, two energy. So there's a RF source from which we can get the you know, can get the energy. Then using amplifier or using coupling element, we can couple the your energy wirelessly to other your load or other device. So and this basically particularly applicable for the low frequency, right? Because it's the size is large. It has some kind of limitation, and the distance is also limited, right? So we can go for the far field or high frequency energy harvesting. In this case, we can use radio frequency, or we can use microwave, or we can use laser source. So this this source may be RF source, or maybe microwave, or maybe laser source. Then we need the transmitter, which consists of you know, your amplifier or your antenna. Here, receiver is in the your far field, radio far field. So maybe distance is not a constant in this case. We can have large distance while using this far field or uh, high frequency energy harvesting. So if you see the visually, this is the near field or low frequency energy harvesting. We have primary regulator or coil. Then this is your core. Then your secondary regulator, secondary regulator or secondary coil. Then we, this will be converted to the this is the rectifier. Then we can power your, your device. Then in case of far field, we can replace your primary regulator with the your transmitter, your antenna, okay, in the free space. Then we have receiver antenna, then rectify, then your device gadget, which need to be powered. Then what is rectifier integrated mean now? So the term is very, I mean, very popular. The antenna integrated with the rectifier and other associated circuitry such as matching network or rectifier to capture RF uh, energy and to convert into DC. And the circuit also termed as rectina sometime. When your rectifier integrated with the antenna, it's become a rectina also. Right? So when but when all the circuits are included on the same circuit, it's called a rectina. So the definition means uh, when we can see rectina, when all the circuits like and from starting from the antenna, then your matching network, then your uh, stories or low pass filter or your load are all are all are connected on the same circuit, then it may be called as a rectina. So for input, maybe variety of inputs are there. We, then we can have RF energy from the base station or from Wi-Fi terminal, from the mobile phones, tablet, laptop, or more recently from 5G devices or IoT. So these are available already available resources in the uh, abundance amount. Then we can have the dedicated RF source, right? So we can have fixed dedicated RF source to power your your rectifier system. These are easily available. And, but there's a problem of, you know, there's an uncertainty over, over the extent of your signal or available of signal, then we can have the dedicated RF source, which can continuously transmit your RF source to convert into DC to the receiving machine. And what are the performance parameters to quantify the performance of your this uh, energy harvesting circuit and main building blocks? So the very, very first basic element is, you know, RF antenna, which capture your RF signals. Then we have to transfer energy from your antenna to the rectified circuit. You need the matching network. Then you have rectified circuit. You can use half wave or you can use full wave rectifier. Then energy storage. And followed by the, you know, this band and this low pass filter. So the reverse. So the basic building block is antenna, matching network, voltage multiplier, rectifier, diode. Then we have energy harvest, energy, energy storage element. And what are the performance parameters? So we can quantify the performance of your this energy harvesting circuit using RF to DC convergence, which is defined by DC output power to the input RF power, or we can say this is um, DL square, which is voltage across the your load divided by your load resistance in divided by your input RF input to the your rectifier integrated antenna. Then your output DC is the one parameter, performance parameter, and output DC voltage and current, then operating bandwidth also. In which of bandwidth your, your rectifier circuit will work? This will be decided by the your bandwidth of your antenna and bandwidth of your matching network. And here, this input power can be uh, determined by by this expression, this phase expression, PT, GT, and GR, which are for in case of transmitting antenna, GR is the gain of receiving antenna, 
is c is a velocity therefore by f r f is the your operating frequency and r is the distance between your transmitting antenna or, or a transmitting rf source and between your your receiving uh, equipment then what are the applications so if you see application wise we have lot of application variety of application like wireless sensor we can power we can power medical implants we can power hybrid devices smart devices like cell phone cover cell phones or smart watches bluetooth speakers headset etc etc then rfid tags then wireless power charger okay so while using this rf energy harvesting circuits we have many advantages like we can replace yeah we can replace conventional power sources as well so like we can get the rid of no dependency of your uh, your your gadget on the battery then we have variety of available rf sources like base station wifi terminals mobile phones and this provides basically green and clean energy so we can you know we can minimize the electronic waste if you can you apply this concept of this energy harvesting rf energy harvesting and no need to replace battery time to time right and you can have, in fact we can have been think of battery less device right then we can also this uh, since many sources are uh, i mean sometime your wifi is transmitting sometime your phone is transmitting sometime your base station so we have almost continuous availability of the your rf power right but you know every, we can i mean in, in, in addition of your advantage also have some kind of limitations right so you will have advantage the cost of some limitations like dependency on external sources right so maybe the source your your i mean your input rf is depend on the your availability of rf source maybe the strength may be less right so we are totally depend on the external rf sources then the availability of your strength of your rf signal is quite low right if you see the from mobile phone the strength is very low so this is challenging to harvest such a low strength signal then depend dependency of rf signal also on the atmosphere changes then physical obstacle then weather condition or geographical locations and lastly the main problem is low convergence sensor what we say i mean i mean so we always make a first to enhance the this convergence efficiency so it is going to enhance the this rf to this convergence efficiency then we can classify your this energy harvesting can depend on the type of you know antenna you are using so we can have um, narrow band antenna if you are using narrow band antenna we can have the a rectifier integrated narrow band or single band antenna then you can also because you no know, maybe signal frequency should may not be sufficient right to power your device right so we can have multi band antennas which can harvest energy from the multiple bands multiple rf sources we can combine you know we can combine wifi or uh, tsm or other uh, wireless standards right then you can also like in this case we are doing uh, in this case when we are combining the frequency we can also have the continuous uh frequency combination so we can have the rectifier integrated wideband antenna which combine your many number of frequencies right or range of frequency we can we can combine and convert into dc then we can also we can also think of array of you know, rectifier ant antenna so we can have directive rectifier antenna where we can enhance the dc power in the particular direction then rectifier integrated antenna combine with the other energy harvesting schemes like we can combine the sunlight or we can combine other energy harvesting schemes so we can and as the power dc power level ultimately right so this the so while using the single band antenna we can use multiple antenna right then we can we have to use different no corresponding rectifier circuit then we can use the low pass uh, filter then we can combine the dc from coming from that each branch of your own single band antenna right but it's it occupy more space because we have number of antenna supporting different bands so we can compact this type of circuit further by using up to get i mean and wide band antenna which can combine different frequencies then we can have the single band matching network then what is developed or rectifier then low pass filter it still the circuit is not very compact so we can also think of the wide band matching network so this is basically more compact kind of uh, energy harvesting so where we have come where we are using uh, a wide band antenna followed by the wide band matching network then rectifier circuit and low pass filter then based on the power combining technique so we can combine power like in this way we can we can combine first your rf energy using the couplers or using the 
corresponded by the your rectifier. So this is RF is coming from different antennas, right? Or we can use array of antenna. Then this RF command combine the RF signals, then it will convert it into DC voltage. On the other way, we can also combine at the DC level. So we will use here we can use array of retina, right? So we are making individual uh, retina, your retina and then rectifier, antenna rectifier, antenna rectifier. Then we are uh, combining power at DC level, right? So both have limitation and advantage. Like in this case, we need multiple rectifier circuits, right? And in this case, we require the power combining circuit means RF power combustion. Maybe sometimes this may be lossy, sometimes this may be. Then we have to before I mean starting design, we have to ensure the availability of your RF signal. Okay, so uh, this sometimes the survey was done to identify the signal distance in different uh, signals. So if you see this, the uh, power transmit from AM or FM power is close to one kilowatt to thirty kilowatts. Then the frequency range of five forty to one one eighty megahertz. Then from TV tower, it's around. 10 to 500 watt, then from Wi Fi technologies, the frequency is 2.4 to 2.5. Uh, typical transmitted power is 10 to 100 milliwatt. Then for G GSM cell towers, it's around 20 watt. Then cell phones, it's around 1 watt to 2 watt from GSM or GSM CDMA. So, um, so to, set, to, do, to, I mean, to find out the power level, what we can do, to be, we can design it, a wide antenna. Followed by the wideband matching network or by using multiband matching network. So, again, this is the practical uh, demonstration of your available signal strength. You can see here uh, signal strength at different uh, frequency bands. So, you can see here this one correspond to GSM frequency bands, this two correspond to 3G, and then second, third correspond to again GSM and 1900 uh, megahertz band or 1800 megahertz. So you can see here the maximum strength is available on the GSM band at uh, around, around 900 megahertz or 800 megahertz. So by using this, um, by using wideband uh, antenna, wideband matching network, if you or you can see here when you get connected to the uh, first way to ensure by using wideband antenna, we have to can ensure that we can connect directly wideband antenna to the your display analyzer to see the Every of RF signal, right? So once you know the RF signal, you can design your matching network accordingly or your rectifier circuit accordingly. So from here we can see the maximum strength is available on the GSM band. So to design your antenna at GSM band followed by the GSM matching network, it's matching network at GSM band followed by the your other circuit. So what is the design concern you can take into account while designing your different blocks of your energy harvesting circuits? So while designing the first element, which is antenna, so you have to take into account the bandwidth of your antenna, then your gain requirement, and polarization, then efficiency, and of course, size of your antenna. So, depending on this, we can have a single band antenna, we can have multi band antenna, or we can have the bad band antenna. Right? So, we can combine energy from different sources. Then we can have the antenna. If you know, if you know the quality, then we have. Right, you know the location of your RF source, right? right? If you identify the location of RF source, you can you can design antenna array, right? So to capture the energy from the particular direction or more RF energy from the particular direction, so we can have the antenna array. Then you don't know the the polarization of incoming wave. Maybe the polarization may be different, so you have to design some kind of polarization insensitive antenna. So you can harvest energy from any kind of polarized EMF, right? So you can have polarization insensitive antenna. Then we can also have the early control antenna because you don't know in which uh, in which RF source you have more strength at a time, right? So suppose at one uh, RF source the strength is down, you can switch to the another uh, RF source by by incorporating the concept of early control antenna. So you can switch that in between the frequency different frequency bands. Then matching network. It's antenna followed by the matching network. So by designing matching network to transfer matching power, you have to keep in mind bandwidth requirement, then losses from the your matching network, you have to minimize the losses. Then of course the size of your matching network and quality factor. So this we have again we have narrow band, multi-band matching network or wide band matching network. Then this matching network can be 
design depend on the frequency you can design if your frequency is low you can use the lump matching network your frequency is high you can use the distributed matching network then you can use the also the combination of lambda and distributed matching network you can have the hybrid or compound matching network right then you can also be as, suppose you are making the uh, this uh, your uh, receiving antenna is a uh, recapitulant in that case you need to have the recapitulant matching network as a well in addition of the recapitulant antennas then suitable rectifier to convert your rf into dc so while selecting this rectifier circuit or diode you have to keep in mind you are converting the frequency how much the converting frequency of this particular diode then switching the speed then this threshold voltage then your uh, sir voltage. yes sorry to interrupt you uh, sir yes. sometimes uh, your uh, audio is not clear not sometimes clear. it is coming coming well but sometimes it is not coming so it's fluctuating uh, it is yes fluctuating the strength is sometimes low or sometimes high. So if you check with your mic, then uh, if it is a network problem, then we cannot do anything. But if it is mic problem, then kindly check it. Yeah, and the maximum volume. So that's mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, sir. And uh, one more thing is uh, go little slowly so that uh, uh, yeah. it would be better. Okay. So, while, this, uh, while uh, selecting this uh, diode, we can have a uh, half wave rectifiers, we can have full wave rectifier, we can have a differential circuit based rectifier, or we can have a uh, voltage multiplier circuit if you want more voltage. So, generally, we use uh, this uh, short key diode based on the silicon technology or maybe. Gallium arsenide. We generally prefer if you have better performance, you can use the gallium arsenide uh, circuit diode. Depends on the requirement. Suppose you have the low bandwidth requirement, then you can use the particular diode model. This is uh, HSMS 2852 or HS, HSMS 2860. Then suppose you're you are harvesting energy at low power level, or if you know that your power input is RF power is low, so you can so in that case required what you required, we require the basically low threshold uh, diode. Right, so it can harvest energy for low input power level. So in that case, you can select your HSMS 2850 volt diode. And suppose for higher power level, right, you need generally higher breakdown voltage diode. So you can choose HSM, HSMS 2820. And if you have higher bandwidth requirement, then you can use HSMS 2800. Right, so depend on the bandwidth, you can select your diode accordingly. Then finally, we have a low pass filter or DC stereo system. So you can use again, you can use and once you, I mean, decided all the blocks of your uh, rectifiers, uh, your energy average circuit, then you can go for the kind of modeling or you can go for the simulation. So you can divide your simulation part, right? In, in, I mean, in two class, one is uh, your passive portion, you can simulate passive portion like your antenna or passive circuits, like passive circuits, maybe your matching network or maybe your your loop pass filter. So you can design that passive portion in the your EM simulators, like you can design in CST or you can design in HFSS. Then you can generate the this S parameters and you can import to the your circuit simulator like ADS or micro office. You can this is your S parameter file. That is from the CST. So you uh, incorporate then you can use your incorporate your active ports and right like you can incorporate your rectifier circuits or all um, lump components then you can have control over the your rf input so by varying your rf you can you can see the your available rf or dc uh, signal from the your rectifier circuits so once you've done this uh this simulation using this csd or ads you can go for the measurement setup so how you measure so basically we need to measure the efficiency right? or dc voltage or current so this is your uh, your your setup for the this measurement so your rf source followed by the your horn antenna which will transmit your rf signal and this is your rectifier circuit right so for and you can use this you can use voltmeter to your measure your dc voltage right 
So this using this you can find out the your DC power. Now how to find out the RF power? So you remove your rectifier circuit. You you use your your bandwidth antenna, right? Directly followed by the your spectral analyzer. So you can see the your received RF power, right? So you know the RF DC power and you know the DC power. You can find out the your frequency or hello sir. Hello. Hello. Sorry for the inter interruption, sir. I have one doubt. Can I ask it now? Yes. Yes, please. Ah, uh, yes, sir. Uh, when we are doing that uh, 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 antenna part and uh, this one rectifier circuit, mm -hmm. can can we do it in uh, in in CST itself? Yes, CST also do, but the, the limitation of CST, the library of CST is not so rich, right? Suppose you have some particular uh, diode, right? So this diode may not be available in the CST, right? So the library of CST is limited. So you can use ADS, which has rich library of all components, active components. Yes, sir. But in CST, that we can do a space yes. modeling. It, it can be done. It can be done. It can be done. Uh, so that we can do in. Uh, uh, can, is it? We will get. A, we, we are we able to get a correct result in CST. Yes, yes, yes. It can be. It can be. In that case, we have to. Uh, I have done in the in that case, we have to take the. Space model of the rectifier. Right, that right. is a short key diode. Right, right. So when this your short key diode model is accurate, then your rate will be good. Otherwise, you can go for the other circuit simulator. They are fully dedicated for the active uh, parts, right? Ah, uh, we have to do the uh, even, uh, even ADS. Even ADS, you have the momentum, right? So no need to design your your even passive portion in the CST. So there is the ADS. You can use the momentum to design your passive portion, right? Okay, sir. In that case, in the, in the S2B file, we have to import the S parameters of our receiving antenna. Yeah, antenna, not receiving antenna. You have to use but transmitting antenna, then your receiving antenna, right? Both. Both, both, yes. Right? Oh, Because both. Is, have, this is this, this, this we are slipping entire system, right? So transmitting antenna, then receiving antenna, right? So okay, this can be mimicking the ADS like in this manner. So this you S2B file uh, mimicking. The complete setup of this transmitting antenna, receiving antenna, right? Ah, oh, okay, sir. That so is a S one, S one two. Yeah, S one two, right? S two one or S one two, right? Ah, oh, okay, sir. This part we have to do it in ADS only. Yes, yes, ADS. No, oh. okay, sir. No, okay, sir. Then you can connect your remaining part, like your your uh, your rectifier or whatever you want to connect. You can connect, right? And you can also have the oh. control over the input RF power. You can whatever power you want to give, you can give. Hmm. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Talk about the measurement. How to measure the DC power or how to measure the RF power? You can find out the power generating frequency. Okay. Hmm. Okay, sir. So we have RF generator, right? So this is your broadband power antenna, and this is your receiving or your antenna. So you can see hmm. this voltmeter given the some kind of no DC voltage. Okay, sir. This voltage can find out the DC power for the particular load connecting to the your rectifier circuit, and the sari power can be found out using the directly connecting your your this spectrum through the bandwidth antenna. So some circuits which are already published okay, by some other authors. So this is broadband ground open RF wave antenna for moderate RF input power. So depend on the you know your input RF power. So this RF power may be varying. Sometimes this power RF power may be low or sometimes may be higher, right? So depend on your RF input power, your efficiency may be may be very right. So typically, when if you want to have higher more efficiency, the input power should be high. So it can at least it, it can uh, it can enable your diode circuit, right? Or your uh, rectifier circuit. So we need some kind of threshold RF input power which can activate your diode your 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 uh, this uh, rectifier circuit, right? So to ensure that we have enough RF input power to activate your diode, so this is the antenna for the moderate input power level, right? So this is basically a rectifier integrated antenna where this your rectifier circuit is integrated with the antenna on the same substrate. So this kind of slot antenna, you can see here this slot is ready tank and we have coke nano waveguide and this in between we have the I mean rectifier circuit, right? So this is your diode which convert your Uh, incoming RF power from your antenna to the DC. So this is your circuit uh, hardware, hardware, and this is the efficiency over the frequency band. So you can see here for different uh, input power level, uh, the, the author plotted the efficiency curve. So you can see here 
when your RF power is high, you have the more uh, convergent efficiency. So low power means your efficiency will be less. If your power is high, efficiency will be high. And you can see here, when your power level is less, maybe in the range of minus 2 dB or dBm or minus 4 dBm, you can see this power level is drastically reduced. I mean, efficiency drastically reduces up to 15% only. So this circuit will basically for the moderate input power level. If your power level is uh, Lesser than this, the efficiency will be very less. So you need to design to modify your antenna in such a manner it can harvest energy for the low end power level also. So the same kind of antenna is uh, published by some other authors. So they but 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 they have done they have used the reflective plane, right? So this in this case your antenna will be more directive, right? So it can harvest more energy from the particular direction. So the con concept is very simple. Your antenna is now become more directional to, to get the energy RF energy from the particular direction. So you can see here, if you see here, this is in, in the case of earlier when we have low efficiency at low power level, right? But if you see here, even at low at minus 5 dBm, which was earlier around 15%. Now, if you have seen this antenna, the convergence efficiency is around 70% is drastically improved at low power level, right? So this can be used to harvest energy when we have input RF power. Then, so you know, now either you can harvest energy at low input power level or high power level, but difficult to harvest energy from low to very high power level, right? Because this is decided by the either your threshold voltage of the diode or breakdown voltage, right? So if you want to have the power level up to harvest energy at all power level from uh, low to high, it means your threshold voltage should be very small and broadband voltage should be high. So you can harvest energy from low to high. So how to harvest energy means in consistent manner in the, from low power level to high power level. So if you see here, so what happening? At low power level, the efficiency is down and also at high power level, again, the efficiency is getting decreased, right? It's downing. Downgraded at high power level. So at high power level, it is limited by the breakdown voltage. At a low power level, it is limited by the threshold voltage of your diode. So is it possible to harvest energy means to, to get the constant efficiency from low power level to high power level? So if you say it may be possible, so we can have the low to high input power energy harvesting, right? So we need to have low threshold voltage and higher uh, reverse breakdown voltage. So some authors have modified your rectifier circuit by integrating your diode with the some kind of hemp device to enhance the overall breakdown voltage. And this is your fabricated circuit. So you can see this is your diode. This is your hemp device. So this way you can enhance the your breakdown voltage. So you can have the higher efficient at higher power level. So you can see here this is the this black one for the conventional rectifier circuit and this red one and blue one for the uh, for this kind of circuit when we have extended uh, uh, power range. So you can see in the broad range from a lower power level to higher power level, we are getting almost, I know, almost not very constant, but almost same kind of power level. So at high power, there's no uh, degree in the efficiency. So at high power level also, we are getting the efficient efficiency. It is not getting down at the higher power level. Some authors have uh, proposed, I mean, fractal kind of uh, loop antenna to harvest energy in the broad range of frequency, right? So you can harvest the energy at particular frequency, or uh, if you want to have more um, energy or more RF uh, energy or more DC power, you can harvest energy from the multiple RF sources in the discrete manner or in the continuous manner. So if you are doing in continuous manner, you can have the concept of broadband or wideband energy harvest circuits. So here, you can see here this uh, matching network is bandband matching network, right? And this fractal provides kind of uh, maybe multi-band response or maybe bandband response. So you can see here, this is the your efficiency for different input power level. And this is the voltage. And you can see it is the over the different frequency level. So you can see here, it is, I mean, if you see the uh, this uh, efficiency, it's not, I mean, very narrow band. You can see here, you are getting consistent efficiency over 60% over the range of frequency. You can see here from around 1.75 to around 1.85, you are getting almost 
there's a little variation in the efficiency, right? You can have some kind of broadband energy options of this. Then you can also have the multi-band kind of loop. You if you want to harvest energy from multi-band because designing, you know, wide band are uh, rectifier is quite challenging, right? So you can what you can do, you can design the multi-band antenna followed by the multi-band uh, rectifier circuit, right? So you can see here this is this is kind of uh, monopole antenna where we have different arms correspond to the different uh, frequencies. You can see this is the response of your multi-band antenna, so it's better to get four bands at around uh, 900 megahertz or, or 1800 megahertz or 2.1 gigahertz or 2.4 gigahertz. Right? And this is the response at two frequency for 0 dBm, 3 dBm. So you can see here, this is uh, we out at 900 megahertz is around, um, around 2.3 or it's at 2.1 gigahertz around 1.3. This is your antenna circuit geometry. And this is your rectifier geometry. So this is basically uh, tested for the dual band uh, matching network. So our antenna is, uh, I mean, rated at four band, but we, for simplicity, we have designed dual band matching network. It will be supported by the, this your antenna. So you can see this is the response for 0.9 gigahertz and for 2.1 gigahertz. So you can see here, the, and this difference at 0.9 gigahertz and 2.1 gigahertz is quite you know, expected because at high frequency, you can see the voltage level is quite low compared to the 9.9 gigahertz because you know at high frequency losses may be more. So we out or efficiency may be less at, at high frequency. This is quite expected. Then we can design the wide band antenna. So you can see here this is which is So here we have used the uh, DRM is quite broadband response. Here basically we have two kind of uh, uh, radiator. One is slot antenna and one is DR. So we have combined so to have the large bandwidth, right? To, to combine the bands of your know, slot antenna and your band of your DR antenna. So we can have this in this case, and we can have the some kind of slot band response and followed by the your rectifier circuit. So you can see here this is the response of your antenna. So and you can see to enhance the gain, uh, we have used the some kind of reflector plate also. So by this, we can enhance the gain of antenna. So you can see by using this reflector, we can have enhanced gain, right? So this, this one is for the uh, gain without your reflector. This red one is with the reflector. So you can see this is uh, incredible improvement in the gain response, right? And then this is the circuit of your rectifier. So then you, then you can test your circuit by uh, by giving feeding different frequencies. So we have tested the same antenna for the 1.8 gigahertz, 2.1 gigahertz, 2.4 gigahertz, and 3.6 gigahertz. You can see here, you are getting almost a similar kind of flow voltage for different frequency, but it means you can ensure that this circuit will uh, give the very, very wide band kind of response means it will be small for all frequency from 1.8 gigahertz to 3.6 gigahertz. So if you have uh, this kind of RF input, your voltage DC voltage efficiency will be almost, I mean, quite close for, for the different frequency bands. You can, this is the efficiency plot, right? So you can see we have, I mean, descent efficiency over the different frequency band, right? starting from 1.8 GHz to 3.6 GHz. And you know, you can, again, you can see at 1.8 GHz, we have higher efficiency compared to the higher frequency because of the less losses at the two frequency. Then we can have the array of antenna, rectifier with antenna. Array. So, you know, we can have array of antenna at the same frequency. So, we can enhance the incoming RF by making the array of antenna. But, you know, for particular, if you know the signal direction, if you know the RF location of the RF source, you can have the array of antenna or array of your rectifier with antenna. So, we, you can combine the power from two antenna by using power combiner. Then you can follow it by the your rectifier circuit. So you can compare, and this is the gain. So you can see you are using single antenna. Uh, it's said that the antenna, the response gain of the antenna array will be quite large compared to the single antenna. Then this is the 
rectified uh, response. This is a rectifier. Means rectifier means simple rectifier when we are giving the uh, input to the rectifier from the your RF source, right? Directly. No, we are not using uh, antenna, but this is the response of your rectifier when we are giving the your RF power from the actual antenna. And this is the comparison between the your V out for single antenna and for array of antennas. You can see the difference is clear. Uh, that if you are using the array of antenna, you can enhance the output voltage compared to the single antenna. And you can use the array of antenna with different frequency band. So we have designed array of antenna for two different frequency bands. So we have designed array of antenna. One antenna is for for JSF band and second antenna for maybe for uh, 3G or maybe for Bluetooth, for target or something like 2.4 GHz. So we have combined energy from two different frequency bands by using the power combiner. So you can see this is the response of this antenna where we have dual band kind of rectifier antenna in the array. So you can see here if you compare this is the earlier case where we have uh, array of two antenna at same frequency, and here we have the array of antenna at two different frequencies. So you can see here in case of in case of uh, same antenna at same frequency, the V out and low power level is less compared to the. So here you can see here we are combining two volts and two frequencies through array of antenna. You can have the better performance or better V out at low power level. So you can see here the difference is clear at low power level. This circuit may provide the better uh, DC voltage or better efficiency. Then this the efficiency or your DC performance also depends on the polarization of your incoming RF signal, right? So maybe this polarization may be maybe anything, right? Maybe sometimes you will be receiving um, horizontal polarization, maybe sometimes you are receiving vertical polarization, right? So suppose you have designed your rectifier circuit for vertical polarization. In that case, if your polarization is changed, in that case, it's difficult to get the, your DC voltage, right? So it's need to design antenna which is which may be um, polarized independent, right? So it can harvest energy for 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 uh, potential polarization incoming RF signal or maybe vertical polarized incoming RF signal, right? So this antenna is dual polarized, which are receiving horizontal polarized or vertical polarized signal. So this does circuit which combining uh, different polarization. So this is your uh, our combined, which combine there's a four antenna array, right? So this vertical polarized signal combined from each antenna to one uh, combiner, which is vertical polarized RF combiner, and horizontal polarized wave are combined to the another RF combiner. Then both are ultimately combined with the high power coupler, not by the rectifier circuit, right? And here we are combining power at RF power level. As I mentioned earlier, we can also power, combine the power at DC level. So, okay. So you first combine your, your polarizer, then you connect the individual rectifier, then you combine the DC power after the uh, your rectifier circuit. Okay? And you see, since your antenna is polarized and sensitive, so you can see the power con conversion efficiency. You can see this power conversion efficiency is product for the different uh, polarizer angle. Right? So if you see the polarizer angle over the different angles, Almost you are getting the stable power conversion efficiency. So it means your, your antenna is polarized insensitive, right? So this you can design your polarized insensitive antenna. Maybe you can also think of the circularly polarized uh, electric rectifier antenna, which can harvest energy from a circularly polarized wave. Then maybe you are not ensure that from which uh, RF source you are getting or from which extent you are getting more RF energy, right? Sometimes there may be fluctuation between the in the different frequency bands, right? So sometimes you are getting the more power from the Wi-Fi or sometimes you are more power from the GSM signal. Right. So you can think of the a reconfigurable kind of you know, uh, rectifier antenna which can switch between different frequency bands to harvest energy from different frequency bands. So here authors have shown a reconfigurable rectifier integrated antenna we have your antenna incorporating one switch. Which can, uh, by making on off, you can switch between two, two frequency bands. Then you also need to have the reconfigurable uh, matching network which can switch, which can support your uh, reconfigurable antenna. Right? So you can see here, this is your uh, rectifier circuit. 
uh, combined with the reconfigurable matching network. And this is your reconfigurable antenna. This is your switch. So by using this switch, you can switch to different frequency bands. So here you can see this antenna is designed for to harvest energy at two frequency bands. One is uh, 5.2 uh, gigahertz and second is 5.8 gigahertz. Right? And there's a, an actual circuit that is let us separate the frequency band. So this antenna is ultimately uh, uh, tested at 4.9 gigahertz and 5.9 gigahertz. So you can see here the power, this efficiency level are, again, um, are almost same at two frequency bands. Right? So sometimes you can receive energy from 5.2 gigahertz, or sometimes you can receive energy from the 5.8 gigahertz to convert into DC. Let me think of so suppose maybe if you are harvesting energy from the RF source only, in that case also your, your energy means this sufficient power, you may not get the sufficient RF power. So you can think of you need more power, DC power. Then you can combine two different uh, sources of your coming energy, right? So you can combine your RF energy with the solar energy, right? So you can see here we have RF energy uh, circuit, then this is solar energy. Uh, solar cells to, uh, to convert the energy from the sunlight, right? So this is your circuit which combines uh, energy from your RF source. You can see there are different antennas. Again, they are dual polarized antenna, which are uh, which receive signal from horizontal polarization and vertical polarization. So uh, one signal is coming from the, from the RF source and second is coming from the, the pro side, there is a is a solar cell, so which can uh, convert DC from the sunlight, right? And also your antenna has kind of mesh antenna, right? So your uh, you can receive the energy without I mean, offsetting your RF, your solar cell, solar energy from the antenna, right? So how to identify, how to quantify the uh, efficiency of this kind of antenna when you're combining your RF into to the solar energy? So in this case, uh, but DC output will remain same. And this input will be your RF input and your, your solar input. So this is solar power, this G into AS. So G is the uh, light density of your uh, solar cell and AS is the your area, surface area of the solar cell. So you can find out the total solar power and plus RF power. So you can have the uh, efficiency of your higher circuit. And this is the response. And you have to ensure that while making this kind of you know, hybrid system, the performance of your RF should not, should not be disturbed by the your, your solar circuit, right? Or solar cell. So to ensure that there should be a minimum disturbance between the two different RF sources. So there's another kind of hybrid rectifier antenna. You can see here, this is your RF antenna, and this is your solar cell. So this is your real contact of your solar cell. This is your silicon layer, and this is your back contact. So here this this real uh, contact of your solar cell we are using, we can use as a radiator, right? So you can see here, this is a kind of, you know, Pope uh, radiator. This is your ground, your antenna, and this is your power combiner. So you can have array of two antenna, which combine with the, your, so the point is here, you can, you can use your, your, this, uh, this your real contact of your solar cell as a uh, RF antenna, right? So you can combine your RF energy as well as your solar energy, and, and followed by the your so you for this uh, RF energy harvesting you need the your magic network. Though you have this solar energy can be directly combined into DC, then you can combine your DC from the your solar cell and DC from the uh, RF uh, circuitry. So you can see this is the your major gains for the this complete system. And this is your efficiency. Right? So we can have decent uh, output. Voltage. This is efficiency combined both the RF and solar energy harvesting. So this is all about the different antenna. Rajesh? Hello? Hello, yes, sir. So how much time do we have? Uh, sir, uh, we have completed one hour. Okay, okay. And, uh, okay, so I think we this have is also to complete. So, so this is about the recent antenna and development in the this uh, recent uh, trend in the this energy harvesting. 
then what we can learn in, in future to, I mean, improve the this existing circuit or to enhance the further your DC um, uh, energy or converted energy or be, how can you enhance the your power power conversion efficiency. So this this work, this existing work may be explored further as below. So you can combine more energy efficiency schemes such as piezoelectric energy or thermal energy or infrared energy or mechanical energy as well. Then exposure of new rectifier topology for the better efficiency, right? So we can think of how to lower down the threshold voltage, how can uh, enhance the breakdown voltage. So we can have identified, we can identify new topology rectifier circuit, which can come, we can harvest energy from the low power to high power level. Then we can have a rectifier and begin nano antenna for optical and solar energy harvest, harvesting, right? So instead of using solar energy harvesting, we so convince the solar cell, we can use the Nano antenna or optical antenna, right? To enhance the power conversion efficiency, which is low in case of solar energy harvesting. Then efficiency improvement at low and high, higher power level, as I mentioned, that can be done using uh, like using low threshold uh, diode or higher breakdown uh, is diodes, right? Then since we are using diodes, we can also see the effect of nullity in the the effect of nullity in the rectifier circuit, which also affect the your performance of your efficiency, right? Then we can also think of flexible or variable or conformal kind of rectifier antenna, you know, right? Which is very useful for the medical applications, right? Or or defense application. Then metal surface or metal based rectifier antenna. You know, then we can also think of adaptable rectifier integrated antenna, you know, which can identify the direction of you know incoming RF signal, right? So we can find out the direction of travel of the RF signal. Then according to your antenna will adapt the will adapt the direction of incoming signal. So it can harvest the energy from the different direction. Right? And suppose sometimes you know, your present, your incoming RF power level is less, then it can switch to the another um, another RF source. Right? So we can have adaptive kind of rectifier antenna. Right? So this is about the potato. So thank you very much. So now I'm ready if you have any doubt, please. Yes, participants, now you can ask questions. So, have you tested all these antennas in uh, real time applications? Yes, if you see this all in there, some, uh, some antennas are from the other authors. And the, our work we have already tested, right? So this antenna is, we have tested, right? This antenna is already tested. This antenna is already tested. As you can see here, these are our major results, right? Also, this is from other authors. So the work we have done, all are tested, right? And they are published. So you can see this actual hardware, right? So these all are tested results. Participant can type your question if you are not able to or switch on your voice or whatever network problem is there. Uh, dear sir. Yes. The basic uh, difficulty is the measurement devices and lab setup. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, and uh, we people who are working in a, a private institute. Mm -hmm or even uh, the labs which are available in university premises. Mm -hmm. They don't have uh, this uh, rich setups. Right. Even now uh, we, we have designed one antenna uh, for uh, 30 gigahertz mm -hmm. band. Okay, we have simulated that uh, with APSS software, okay. but now we are not able to uh, find the vector analyzer of that, that frequency. Yeah, this is true. This is true. Uh, so, so, is it possible uh, to have some collaborations? So at least we can uh, visit uh, your labs at yeah, definitely, 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 with definitely. your permission. So, it, this will be definitely. the great help. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So, do yes. you have that uh, big uh, thirty megahertz spectral laser uh, at your place? Yeah, 
right now we have 20 gigahertz VNA. We have complete oh, setup for 20 gigahertz now, and very soon we are going to procure this 40 gigahertz setup, right? Uh -huh. So currently we have a full plus setup for up to 20 gigahertz. Achha, so okay, we have okay. VNA, we have Analyzer, we have RM source up to 20 gigahertz, we have enough chamber, everything we have brought up to 20 gigahertz. Oh. And we are in the process to acquire this, to upgrade this facility to 40 gigahertz. Uh, that is the biggest problem, sir. For uh, we, can uh, we can understand. So right now, you know, have you heard about the ice dam? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is basically central specialty, right? So you can mm -hmm. book the slot. You can just identify the your requirement. Then there's mm -hmm. thousands of uh, this big uh, uh, equipments are there. So this coordinate mm -hmm. is basically ISC Bangalore, right? Oh. So yeah, ISC Bangalore, I know it. Yes, ISC Bangalore, right? Uh -huh. So basically, it's a uh -huh. common facility. So you can just go to the website. Of this mm -hmm. uh, this facility, ice capacity, then see the uh, available equipment, and you can book mm -hmm. the slot. You can go there. You can measure whatever you want to measure. That's okay. But can we find the list of uh, the, those uh, institutes where uh, this uh, uh, all the equipments are there? Because yes, you're yes. trying to submit. Yes, yeah, this is the purpose of this thing. Mm. If you go to this ISM website, even we have also mm. registered for this ISM. Okay, so even for our okay. equipment, we get the return at their website. So all the okay. institute have been basically, I mean, they have uh, collaborated, right? So this uh -huh. they are basically on the single platform, right? So all the major institutes have been, I mean, uh, registered for this ISM website. So you can mm. just see the equipment and where this equipment is available. So you will see the this uh, uh, concern institute and concern mm. person also. Which is responsible for this measurement. Fine, sir. Today I'll do that. Yes, yes. Right? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, one more thing, sir, I want to add, uh, Dr. Makran, sir. Yes, sir. Are you from Pune? I am from Pune. Okay. So, sir, uh, in DIAT also, if you see, we have uh, these kind of measurement facility. But we, we have not have 30 gigahertz, I think, Victor Elizabeth. Yeah, we have currently we have 26.56 gigahertz vector network analyzer right, so that right. you can measure up to 26.5. Right, right. Okay. We after, if, you, if you come, gigahertz. yeah, if you come after one month, then we will have 40 gigahertz VNA. Oh, great, great. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. And we have uh, we okay. have this NOC chamber facility up to 40 gigahertz. Right, right. No, we have visited your place, sir, twice. Because one of my friend, yeah. uh, Professor G Ganesh Gagwar, sir, is there as one of the participants. Mm -hmm. So he has mm -hmm. given some references and he has taken us uh, to mm -hmm. your place. Uh, but mm -hmm. uh, since it was uh, below 30 gigahertz, so we were not able to uh, conduct that experimentations. We did it for 5 mm -hmm. gigahertz antenna. We started with 5 gigahertz oh. and then we shifted down to 5G. And even mm -hmm. uh, today in India, we are having uh, the band of uh, 10 gigahertz. But uh, worldwide, uh, they are proposing to go uh, behind 27 gigahertz. So we yes. opted for that. But thank you, okay. sir. Next next month, uh, I will come to you. Uh, yes, the, actually, the can... NOC chamber facility uh -huh. in DIAT, previously uh -huh. it was not working, but now we have functional this chamber. Achha. So you can measure uh, also the radiation pattern of antenna or maybe these kind of things. Energy harvest, harvesting circuit, you can measure it. Yes, so I think it is a good facility of this measurement, right? Yes. Even we had simulation, uh... sir, we have fabricated that antenna. Mm -hmm. So you can come Maybe for measurement. Come sir. Next month, we'll, we'll do that, sir. I will take your yeah, when you when you When you join this offline sessions of this FDP, then you can test your antenna. You can come no, with your no, antenna. No. That is difficult, sir. <laughs> and I think we can also tie yeah, up with the We need, need to cater 9 to 6 office time and then you need to come there. But uh, we'll 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 after the Diwali we'll come down there, sir. We'll just give me one day for it. I'll take your permission and I'll be there. Yeah, yeah, sure. Hmm? Thank you, sir. Yeah. Yes. Participants, any other question? Uh, Rajesh, sir. Yes. Uh, but does DIT allows uh, private colleges to uh, like test their antennas or uh, some issues related to antennas? Can you address? Yes. Them? Yes, they started. Okay, sir. You can book the slot and you can come anytime. So we need to write one data regarding this uh, to department or VC in this case. Yeah, uh, I will tell you so you can write that uh, the concerned person. Okay, sir. Who look after these uh, instruments. 
so that okay, you sir. will get you can book the slot and you can come for the measurement okay sir any charges are there for this yes it is very nominal charges maybe 200 okay, or 300 sir. rupees per hour yeah so it is okay sir Yes. Any other question from the participants? We are expecting one question from each participant. So you ask the questions. Okay, if there is no other question, then uh, uh, okay, so actually, I need to discuss few more things with the participants. So I think uh, we can thank our speaker so that he can leave and later we can discuss. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Rice. Uh, and sorry for I was I was little fast, right? <laughs> I do. <laughs> no problem, sir. Actually, the problem is with maybe with mic or some network mm -hmm. problem. Otherwise, okay. it was okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. So thank you very much for giving okay. this talk, and yes. you have discussed okay. so many things regarding yes. this energy harvesting circuit, and then the most important uh, is hybrid hybrid energy Pariyar? harvesting circuit. Uh, Pariyar, sir, just one minute. Yes. Yes. Uh, can you suggest some books uh, to start uh, uh, on these topics? Uh, this rectifier antenna. Rectifier antenna. There is no, I mean, dedicated group for uh, particular this rectifier. But I mean, this normal, this no, this uh, uh, this PG books or no, this uh, conventional books may be suitable for this uh, rectifier circuit, right? Uh, like, well, like dedicated to this topic. Because maybe rectifier any... is, is a simple circuit. It's not nothing is in the rectifier. We have um, uh, study about the normal rectifier, right? So it's simple yes. rectifier. It's basically diode, circuit diode, followed by the Simple capacitor means low pass filter. Mm -hmm. It's simple circuitry. The, the main challenge is designing matching network, right? So for matching network, there are many things are available for the matching network. For matching network, then for the antenna portion. Right? So like for antenna, so there are variety of books are there. So if you drop a mail, I will send a title of books for this matching network of for antenna books, right? For antenna topics. Okay, thank you, sir. But for rectifier, you don't need any book, right? Simple circuitry. Okay. You can refer, or you can refer some papers. No, you can refer some general papers for the for the basics or recent advance advance advancement in this uh, rectifier circuit. Thank you, sir. Okay, sir. So thank you very much for giving this talk and uh, accepting our invitation. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Rajesh, yeah. for inviting yeah. me. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. So you can leave, sir. Maybe I will talk to participants for okay, the thank, thank you, sir. Okay, so one information to participants. One is tomorrow uh, there will be a quiz. Okay, so that quiz will be uh, objective type. So you will get multiple choice questions, right? So the questions may be 15 or 20. It is related to whatever we have covered in the talks. Okay, so it is maybe related to energy harvest, harvesting circuit, or it may be related to variable antenna, or it may be related to the other talks, like uh, one psychology classroom behavior talk. So we will combine uh, or we will select, choose few questions so that we will finalize a quiz, maybe for 15 or 20 questions. Okay. We, I will share all the PPTs okay, with you so that you can go through these PPTs so that uh, it would be easy to answer. Another thing is, so it will actually the quiz will be online so you can just click the link and you can choose your options and then you can submit it so it would be like google form type of quiz another thing which i want to share with you so i will share my screen
I think uh, it is visible to you. Okay, so uh, is it visible? Yes, sir. Okay, so I request all the participants to note down this title of the paper. Variable dual band magnetoelectric dipole antenna for wideband body area network and WLAN application. So you can download this paper okay. or if you are able, if you are not able to download this paper, then I can download it and I can share with you. So you have to study this paper and you have to find some key points or some bullet points. Okay. So that uh, like uh, summary of this paper, you have to find out and you have to prepare a list or we can say a prepared a one page document okay then send to us like summary summary sir like summary of summary, the paper yes yes what you observed in this paper and what were the key points okay also you can refer the references of this paper so what is actually happened and what is mentioned in this paper so key points and summary of this paper yeah, so this is the task uh, that you have to complete maybe by tomorrow so with the quiz you will submit this the quiz time will be after the lecture tomorrow after 9 pm we will have quiz so 9 to 9 20 20 minutes quiz will be there so it is a just small quiz but you have to be prepared for that Sir, we'll receive that all material via email, no, sir? Link, you'll be sharing the link. Yes, yes, yes. Email or WhatsApp, I will send in both. Okay, thank you, sir. Because uh, I'm sending email every day. I think all of you got the emails. Yes, sir. Yes, we are tuned with that oh. email. Yes, so on the same email, I will send all the PPTs so that you can read it. Yes, thank you, sir. for uh, variable antenna also uh, uh, how should we start actually like uh, concepts and all points uh, sir uh, if you search this paper and if you read it then you will you will find some uh, most means I, I would say that interesting things in this paper okay so if you search the references of this paper then there is you can see the survey of variable antenna there so you have to find out some key points what are the technologies available and what would be the suitable technologies for the variable antennas so some key points you can mention okay sir yeah. what is that w, wban sir wban it is body area network actually Okay. So this is actually the body area network and uh, this is actually through wireless. So it is wireless body area network. I think you will be able to download this paper. Or I will share this paper uh, along with these PPTs. It is available Sai Sai Hub, no sir. I think it is available. Okay, yeah, I am I'll checking. Check I will check it. I think it is not available and that, but it is available on IEEE Explore. So I will send this paper to you. So this is a actually paper of IEEE transactions on antenna and propagation. So it is a top journal. 
so this paper is very good so okay if any any participant have any question sir author Sorry. of this paper is author of this paper is okay just wait S. Yan. Sen Yan, Ping Jack So. These are the two authors. Third one is Guy A. E. Van Den Bosch. No issue, I will send this paper. Okay. No need to download it. It would be easy. Now, any other question? Or many participants related to the quiz and uh, this paper. Okay, then if uh, there is no other question, then uh, you have time. Uh, you can do this task maybe in this uh, session also. So till 9.30, this session is actually up to 9.30. So you can do it now or maybe you can do it tomorrow. So it depends on you. So you, you can just email me. Okay, so we can close the session. So thank you very much for attending the session. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Peace.